Hello guys and welcome to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about decorating. So I'm gonna share with you all the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way in my experience from decorating. Um, I feel like my DMs are always full of, can you help me? Can I pay you? Can you fly out here? Can I send you a photo? So I just wanted to put all the knowledge I have into one video. So hopefully this will help you guys all out. If you're new here, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below and that will notify you every time I post a new video here on YouTube. But now let's go ahead and jump straight into today's video. Okay, we're gonna start with our first tip and this is always my tip no matter what we're talking about and it's to clean and declutter your house. I know we said we're gonna talk about decorating but it doesn't matter how big your budget is and how nice your items are. If your house is cluttered or dirty, it's not gonna matter. I personally feel like even a small, simple, humble home that's clean and organized is always going to show better and feel better than a million dollar home with the best items in it. So this is a really easy way to start out. This costs you zero dollars. It actually may even make you money for the decorating you wanna do. So start picking out all those pieces you don't need, declutter them out. If it's dirty, just start cleaning them. And I promise you that's just like the perfect foundation before you start decorating your home. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next tip, which is getting inspired. This is a really important one because you gotta figure out your style, especially if you're on a really tight budget. So you guys have watched me through the years change my style a lot. It has taken time, but I'm also able to do that because it's my job. But if you're not wanting to waste a ton of money and time, you really have to do your research to figure out what you like. Because in my head, I really thought I was a glam girl. I thought I would love a glam home. So when we came over into this house, I did a lot of gold and crystals. I switched to like tufted furniture. I did all of that and once it was done I realized it was not my style at all and so we started making the switch. Now I've known for a long time that I was neutral. I love neutrals. I will say in my very first house you guys weren't a part of the journey at that point. We weren't here on YouTube. I had color but I kept going into my friend's house um, for life group and I kept trying to figure out like what do I love about her house? So as you're going in friends' houses, as you're going on Pinterest, it's not a way to go and like get jealous, get inspired, figure out what you're liking, take pictures of it, take snapshots, start narrowing down what it is that you're liking about those spaces. And for me, I finally asked her, I was like, what's so different about your home? Cause it was still cozy. It was still inviting. It was still decorated. It was all neutral. She was like, I don't have any colors in here. So the first thing I did that week was rip all the color out of my house and of course it was super bare and then I went and got all white things and brought them in from Ross and I was very very disappointed <laughs> so I've learned a lot of tips of how to make neutrals work and if you stay tuned I'm going to be sharing those tips with you as well. I will say though the best resource and it's just easier to do is Pinterest just so you're not going into a ton of homes and snapping pictures. Just go on there even if it's just short little angles start really figuring out what it is. Is it pops of black? Is it the greenery? Is it that there is bold color or pattern? Um, the more screenshots you take you'll be able to kind of analyze them and look at them and start to figure out why you were choosing all those different styles and what they have in common. Okay, so now that we got through all those like fundamental pieces, now it's time to start decorating. So say you have the pieces that you're gonna use, they're in your home. Now I'm gonna start taking you through my home and showing you tricks on how to use the pieces that you're decorating, just so it can look beautiful and very pleasing to the eye. So decorating can be really hard to do, especially if you want it to be pleasing to the eye. So I learned along the way to decorate in threes 
or odd numbers. So if you're doing a cluster of things, it doesn't really matter so much, but if you're decorating like a table or a coffee table or a little nook, it's really weird to just put two things on it. So try to find one more thing, making it an odd number like three, and it just balances out a little bit better. There's something about two, it just looks unfinished, but if you'll add one more thing, it completes the space. So you can see as you look at clusters throughout my home, most most of them are in groups of three or five, so they're like odd numbers. Now, I don't get it right every time, but I don't like to just put two things out. Um, so I always try to work with those odd numbers. Okay, another thing we need to talk about are budgets. That's really important that you have one in mind when you go and start decorating a space or a room or your home and basically just figure out what your budget is. Not what Sally Sue's is next door, not what Christina's is on TV, your budget. And I promise you, you can make your home feel amazing on whatever budget you have. If it's zero dollars, I have shared so many tips in the process of my YouTube journey of how to make your house feel better on zero dollars. Clean it, declutter it, use the pieces you have, rearrange them, grab a can of spray paint that you probably have in your garage or you can ask as a birthday gift and spray paint will change so many things. I'm gonna be sharing that as one of the tips in today's video and showing you the pieces I've created in my home with them. So you can do this on a $0 budget or if you have a huge budget, obviously you can do it as well. But I feel like people get really discouraged when they watch other people, especially on social media, decorate. But you have to change your mindset of getting sad and um, starting to compare versus getting inspired. So when you see something you like, get inspired to find a way to make it possible on your budget. I have been doing that my entire marriage with Chase. I can tell you we went from having no money to having a ton of extra money, but no matter what, we've always lived within our means and our budget. So when I'm done decorating, I don't have to feel guilty. It's not on credit cards. We're not trying to pay it back. I've got more creative along the way and I will tell you the pieces that I've had to create on my own are almost more precious to me than the ones that I've went and spent money on to bring into my house. So just keep that in mind if you're on a small budget. Just get inspired and find a way to make those pieces happen on your dime and your elbow grease and I promise you you'll find a way to make it happen. Okay, now let's talk about paint because paint is powerful and it's very affordable. So just grabbing a can of spray paint can change so many pieces. It's like under $5. For example, this base right here was like a clear blue color. I wanted to show you the bottom so you could get the idea. And all I did was spray paint it and it completely changed the look and the style of this base. Now this one already had jute on it, but you could add that as well. Another piece I did was this fireplace right here. You can see in our last home it was white. I've had this in all three of our houses and I have loved it so much but it just wasn't fitting in so we painted it black and now it is beautiful in our master bedroom. Um, you can also paint walls so you don't have to do crazy accent walls if you'll just get a can of any color paint just a pop of color whatever that is for you it really will just make little nooks and crannies pop so much more and then you can do the same thing with furniture pieces when we originally got this piece it was just all wood and just by taking the drawers out and painting what was left of the frame it just changed it so much and it made it more our style and then here's a little bit more advanced accent wall but it completely changed the look and feel of this room for like under a hundred dollars you can also grab paint pins and just stencil things on your wall all of this was done on a really small budget because it was just paint and you can tell right here it makes a huge difference Another tip that I always like to share is only have pieces you love in your home. So if you have pieces around that you look at them and you just don't love them, maybe they irritate you, maybe they have bad vibes or maybe even bad memories that every time you look at it, it makes you think of an ex or you know something that happened that day, get rid of those pieces in your home. They serve you no purpose and no joy. So I rather have an empty home than have a full home of pieces that 
just don't bring me joy. They irritate me. They have bad memories attached. Whatever it is, get those pieces, donate them, pass them along, sell them. If you're on a tight budget and you just want to redo them, maybe do the spray paint method like I talked, add something to it to make it look completely different and use it in a different area of your house. But I'm a full believer if it's a piece that you don't love, get it out of your house immediately. Now let's talk about texture, wood, and plants. Oh my. So I feel like whatever style you're going with, it may be changed up just a little bit, but I feel like texture goes a really long way. Unless you're going super modern where you're doing like very clean and straight lines, I feel like any other design can really use texture. I feel like with glam, farmhouse, Scandinavian, all of those texture is just so nice to have. And I feel like it makes your pieces look even more expensive, even if they weren't. It's just more luxurious. It adds a lot of interest to the eye. It also helps with um, like ivories and whites. Um, I like to have something in there if it's like gray speckle or tan speckle, um, especially on like our sofas and rugs because it keeps it um, like hiding dirt really well. And then wicker is a great way to warm up your house. So whether it's wicker or wood um, or jute, anything like that is really going to warm it up and it brings in those natural tones along with wood. I feel like all of that's kind of the same category. And then adding some pops of green through plants. I don't care if they're real or faux it really brings life to the space so think about that especially if you're liking the style that you're seeing here i just have a lot of whites and creams and then wood tones textures and then a few plants for a pop The next thing I want to talk about, especially if you're like in small spaces and need extra storage or anything like that, find pieces that serve multiple functions. Like this right here, typically I'll have decorated, but it's dance season, but I'll keep like a coaster and a candle and a plant on it. And so I can use it when I'm taking a bath or Chase sits here a lot when he's putting on his shoes, but I get ready um, right here and I get Savannah ready, especially during dance time and I have to do her hair. This is so sturdy. I just drag it over and I can do her hair here. I don't have to get a chair from another room. I don't have to drag anything out. So this has been huge for me. I can use it when I'm in the bath. Chase uses it to get dressed and I use it to get Savannah's hair done. And it's all one decor piece. So as you start buying things, think of items like that that will really make your day run smoother. Another tip are baskets. They are so good to have spaced through your entire house. Um, when Savannah was little, I would keep toys and baskets and then just throw a blanket over it. And so when someone came over, we could just hurry, toss everything in there, throw the blanket on it, and it looks like a nice decor piece. You could also do it with pillows as well. Obviously, we don't have toys in them now because Savannah's older, but I did that a ton when she was little. So I could pull those out. There could be tons of like blocks or Legos or cars or whatever, puzzle pieces and then you just throw the pillows on top and your space looks grown up again. We also had like a big square ottoman when Savannah was growing up. It was leather. We loved that thing and what was so nice is it opened up and it was full of stuffed animals and blankets because she loved them. So when you're decorating your home think about those pieces even if it's a little bit more money. Um, it's things you can keep stuff in. So even if you don't have kids it would be nice for blankets, remotes, whatever you have. Um, if you don't have storage, buy pieces that like open up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is something that drives me crazy. It's something I'm always hiding, always tucking away. I'm sure a few of you already know what I'm about to say, but I feel like just hiding wires and cords will elevate your space so much and it's free to do. Um, anytime I walk in a room and I see a cord, like I start pulling out packing tape. You guys know I have every gadget <laughs> that you can think of, but I feel like it really can cheapen the space and it just makes it look cluttered. Now, if your wires and cords don't bother you, that is all that matters. This is all about just creating spaces that we love to go home to. When you walk in your home, it should be a calm, happy place. And so that's why I'm sharing all these tips. If I walk in and see cords, I'm not a happy mama. <laughs> so I like to hide those. So let me show you a few ways if you're new here how I do that. 
I'm gonna share all sorts of ways and all different budgets. But the first one is when we finally upgraded, Chase and I have never had like matching um, furniture for our bedroom and it's still not all the way matching, but we grabbed two nightstands and a dresser. But one thing that made me so happy when these came home, I didn't even realize in the store, but it had these built in right here. So you could plug in your lamps, your chargers, all of that. So if you are searching for new furniture, that is something to look for now don't go out and buy new furniture for it unless you have the budget um, it's just next time you're looking a lot of pieces have that now there's also tons of gadgets on Amazon to keep cords from like falling down and having to search for them to plug things in so I can link these for you but just making simple switches like that when you are purchasing pieces is just a smart way to do it because it makes life so much easier now I'm gonna show you another cord hider that I love. This is basically so you can push your furniture flat back. So when you walk into the space, I never want like a huge gap between like our dresser and the wall. And so I found these slate sockets a few years ago. I can't seem to buy enough of them. I love them in my house. I wanted to show you a before. I'll pull this out so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll link this down below as well because I feel like every home should have a few of these. This is the sleep socket. So as you can see here, it plugs in. Let me see if I can get this all for you right there. So it just plugs in, it's nice and flat. And then basically it's just an extension cord and you can plug like three things into it down there. So then everything's plugging in down below your piece and not right here. If we had things items plugged in right here, this couldn't sit flush and then it's pushing against them. Um, so I feel like this has just been a game changer if you um, have furniture in front of things like sofas, beds, nightstands, dressers, or if you just have this out somewhere or maybe a chair over here and you're trying to like hide things plugging in you can still tell this is prettier to look at than just plugging items straight into the wall so this is in my daughter's room so for instance it's not behind a piece of furniture but it looks nicer and it just blends in if we had like her tv and everything plugged in there it would just be messy whereas when we have the sleep socket in real life you honestly don't even really notice it so i really really love those and then for the tape, I tape anything that um, falls down. So I used to have lamps on this in my entryway. I tape it, this piece is really heavy, to the back. And you can see I tape it down the leg so it's not falling straight back and you see cords. Sometimes this will get you to the outlet and you don't even have to hide it with pillows. But just tape it along the table all the way down so it's running along the leg and not the wall. Okay, another tip is if you have baseboards, you can also push it underneath them. So right here, I have the cord coming from my desk. Technically, it would be running right here and getting really messy. I'm gonna pull this out for you guys so you can see. You can tuck them underneath your baseboards so that they're hidden underneath there and not just out on your floor. So you can take like a flathead screwdriver to do this or like a pencil. If there's enough gap, sometimes you can do it with your fingers, but you can see I'm just like shoving it underneath there and it's really easy to do and then you don't have like cords everywhere. Okay, I know I'm giving tons of cord suggestions, but it's just something that I've learned along the way. If you have lamps, even like table lamps, and they have a base, um, typically you can push the cord in. So this cord is really long, but I just take it and push it in and it's going into the center of this base. So then, let me push it all the way in. When I turn it like this, there's not much gap between here and plugging it in. It's not just sitting in the back or even underneath the baseboard. It's all within the lamp itself. Okay, the next tip has to go along with your bathroom and I love using kitchen towel sets. 
in my bathroom. They're so much nicer. They have so much more details and they're typically um, cheaper as well. So I've never really understood that. So I threw out like normal bath towels a long time ago and I just feel like these look way more expensive for cheaper. I got this set for $5.99. Um, they come in all different sizes, all different colors. I love to get mine at like Ross or Home Goods. So it's just a nice way to um, kind of fancy up your bathrooms, even if you just do this in a guest bathroom, but I do it in all of mine. And when I made the switch, I've just loved it ever since. And I just love having those extra details on the hand towels themselves. If you get really long ones, I've noticed there's like a TikTok or something like that where you can almost tie them like a scarf on to um, the rod itself so kids can't like yank them down when they're drying their hands. It just stays up there. So that's really cool too if you want to try that tip. But I wanted to show you up close kind of the difference. Like to me, the one on the left is so much nicer. It's even a lot bigger, but you can get smaller kitchen um, towels as well. This one was larger, but I just loved the design on it. A good way to like freshen up your space or make it feel new or just fresh again is to use what you have but rearrange your pieces. I do this all the time on my channel. I call it the itch to switch. You can do it as big or little as you want. So I even like switching rooms sometimes and flipping things out just to make my house function best for us. So I know it freaks a lot of people out, but this is our home and I want it to work the best that it can. And some years it looks one way and some years it looks another. Sometimes I need that window with the light or I want that darker space for my daughter. Whatever it is, it's okay to switch up your spaces and it's also okay to switch up your decor. So I feel like it's hard for people to do this. They put a plant in a particular spot and they feel like that's the only place for it or maybe it's a throw or a pillow. That's also why I really like decorating with neutrals and then you can add a pop of color wherever you like it. But if most of your items are neutrals, you can use it throughout your entire home. So that one piece that you spent money on, whether it's a lot or a little, can be used several times. So the best way to shake things up, say you're working on your living room or something, is to take all your living room decor down and put it in the center of your room and then start putting it back up. If you're just trying to move a few pieces, sometimes you don't get as creative. Another way to really change things up is to do like two rooms at the same time. So pull out all your like dining room and kitchen decor with your living room and put it all in the middle of a space somewhere. So like on your living room rug or on the kitchen table, then start putting those pieces back out and it really will make your space feel new again and you spent zero dollars. Okay, another tip I've always done and I've caught myself doing it is when I put a new piece out, I stand back and look at it to make sure I like it. So walk in from the front door, come in from the dining room, look at it from all angles so you can make sure it looks good in that area. Also, if your house is really dark, um, add some mirrors throughout your house and it really does brighten up the space. It also makes the spaces feel larger so you can use those to make your small rooms feel bigger and you can also double stack them to make your wall seem taller. I feel like you can use these in so many places. So grab some mirrors. I feel like Goodwill and lots of places have them and it really will brighten and make your space look larger. Another hack that I try to stress all the time is hang your curtains as high as you can. It's gonna make your walls and room once again feel so much higher and more grand. You can tell from this drawing right here, it just makes the window seem larger and it also makes the room seem like taller or grander and it's such an easy thing you can do. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed all these decorating tips and hacks today. Um, decorating your home can be a journey, so don't feel like you're in a rush. Take your time, you're gonna learn things as you go. And the number one tip is just to make sure you love it. It should never be decorated for somebody else. You should love the things in your house. It should bring you joy and you happiness and whatever that looks like is right for you. So remember that on your home decorating journey. Um, I hope you guys enjoy 
enjoyed it, let me know your favorite tip down below in the comments section. And once again, if you're new here, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. So you gotta smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time. Comment, say hi, hit the bell so I know I'll see you next time. Smash like, subscribe.